planet Earth, there is a major CME impact coming. You might be able to see the aurora at fairly low latitudes tonight into tomorrow morning. We'll talk all about it. It's a filamentary fest here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. And by the way, thanks for tuning in. If I look a little bit hollow today, it's because we are retooling the operation to migrate to a new PC. Compliments of the Smash team. So you may see a massive filamentary eruption happening up here. And some of it splashing down, most of it, is on its way out into the greater solar system. Is it headed your way? Well, the answer is no. But there is another CME headed your way that occurred yesterday evening. We'll get to it. And lots more. There's a close-up of this most recent filamentary eruption. It's what we call a crown prominence. It's when you have huge plasma filaments suspended by magnetic fields hanging out around the polar regions. This is a feature associated with solar maximum, which means we're going to have quite a solar maximum as we're still like a year off from the likely solar maximum of solar cycle 25. Huge filament also in the western limb. Great Earth scale to show you some of the reference size for that. Also some CME activity happening from over there. Here's your equatorial view. This is, by the way, another 24-hour video from SDO 193 plus 304 angstroms. It is a filament fest. The likelihood of additional coronal mass ejections remains at nearly 100%. Also, very high likelihood of seeing an X-class flare from this sunspot group up here. As it approaches the limit, becomes more likely to produce major flaring events, hence major radio blackouts possible on planet Earth, especially for the Northern Hemisphere. We've already got polar radio blackouts, although those are now subsiding. Here's your southern polar region. Huge filament down here. I mean, talk about filaments. There are certainly a lot of large ones on the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk. Now let's move to sunspots here briefly. This is yesterday plus today from SDO Intensity Gram. And we've had a mild dip in radio flux and uh, the sunspot number, I think, also, but those are mostly stable sunspot groups. Once again, here's the Intensity Gram yesterday plus today, May 10th and 11th. And there, once again, is the Magnetogram. And it sounds like there's an echo in here. And let's see what's going on on planet Earth. So we do have some volcanic eruptions happening, including Sakurajima, which is producing an 8,000 foot plume of volcanic ash or a flight level 080, flight level 060 over Suwanose Jima, 6,000 foot ash plume, similar ash plume over Luatolo and the lesser Sunda Islands as it explodes. Luatolo producing a 6,000 foot cone of volcanic ash, 5,000 foot ash cone from Krakatau, 21,000 foot ash plume over central Mexico, complements of Popocatépetl as it explodes. Nevado del Ruiz here also looks like an uptick there in Colombia. Nevado del Ruiz exploding, producing a 24,000 foot ash plume, flight level 240, flight level 230 over Ecuador from Cotopaxi, and continuous LGT emissions. Uh, lava, gas, and Tungsten, I don't know. LGT emissions there from Sabancaya, also in Peru. A reminder not to pull vault the caldera. We did have one large earthquake happening uh, yesterday. It was of 7.6 magnitude. That's a 90-day bar graph. There's a location of that one uh, in the middle of nowhere there in between Fiji and Samoa and Tonga. It was also at extreme depth over 200 kilometers estimated depth. Nobody likely felt that if it did occur at the surface, that would have been over an eight magnitude quake, but it didn't. It was 210 kilometers depth. So that's a big earthquake uptick. Keep in mind that could be a foreshock. Any earthquake can be a foreshock like this 5.0 in Japan that occurred at 1254 universal time yesterday afternoon. And pardon the lateness today. Again, we are in the process of retooling the Smash News Network least busted name in news. This 7.6 happened at 1602 Universal Time yesterday afternoon. And of course, it's followed by a series of aftershocks. There was also a 5.0 at the Solomon Islands. That's uh, like 2,000 miles to the west of that. That was at 
17.01 Universal Time yesterday afternoon. Japan had a 5.2. That was at 19.16 yesterday evening Universal Time. Vanuatu had a 5.0. That was also at depth 129.5 kilometers estimated depth. And besides that, only one other 5 magnitude quake, a 5.2 at Japan at 9.52 this morning. And let's get back to space. Again, quick reminder, filamentary fest continues. Likelihood of coronal mass ejections very high. One of them just went flying. We've also got the Jerry Seinfeld filament. We've got the Larry David filament. And we've got the Bill Burr filament right in line there. Has anybody named this one? If you want to name filaments after living people, follow us over on Twitter. Follow the hashtag name that filament. 10.7 centimeter radio flux has dropped down to 170 solar flux units, and the sun just melted my face. Fortunately, I'm wearing a radiation reflecting hat today. There's the one year graph to put it in context from Toland.info. The radio flux is the black line there. Perhaps you can see how proportional that is to the red line below it, which is the sunspot number. And let's move on to the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard, which has once again a long explanation. Continuing CME transit will likely lead to unsettled and active conditions today on May 11th. So there you go. NOAA forecasting a KP7 between 15 and 1800 universal time uh, this afternoon. So now I'm expecting a higher impact than that. I'm expecting an 8.33. That's where I'm expecting it to peak out at. I think this is going to be an even stronger geomagnetic storm than last time, but it does depend on magnetic field orientation. So you may be able to see the aurora tonight. We're setting up a little operation where we're located to go out and see if we can see some aurora and take film of it and so on. <clears throat> So if you've got clear skies, we're hoping for clear skies in Lehigh Valley tonight. You may be able to see the aurora tonight and tomorrow morning. We'll keep a live stream going to show you the relevant data that might help it to be more likely for you to indeed be able to see the aurora. So here's the NOAA forecast. That's the NOAA Enlil spiral. And it looks completely different than the NASA one. I think they're in the process of updating it at the moment. Uh, NOAA is showing that CME to miss Earth a little bit more than NASA is. So uh, it looked like a more direct hit to me. Uh, NOAA has that mostly missing. So NOAA's forecasting more of a glancing blow there on the main impact. They're expecting a KP7. I'm expecting a KP8.33. So we'll have to see what happens, and it could be an extended period. Here's the NASA forecast, and I'm not going to leave that on the screen long because that's that looks like it's that doesn't make any sense. Note the time and date stamps. I don't know what it's saying, but it doesn't make any sense to me. So let's just move on to look at Earth's magnetic moment from space for the past four hours. This is our geospace magnetosphere movie for the day. It's depicting magnetohydrodynamic pressure. There is a coronal hole wind stream that's actually continuing here at the moment. And we expect a very sharp signal when we do see CME impacts later this afternoon as we expect space to be quite empty in between Earth and Sun. Next, the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from the ground level. This is one of the data sets that you can look at to determine if the aurora are likely to be visible where you are located. The aurora will typically coincide with where you see very dark red areas on this. So when you see a geomagnetic storm, this can help you out. Also, there's an aurora forecasting feature on the Space Weather Prediction Center. There's even a geoelectric field portion. That's right down at the bottom there, the US and Canada geoelectric field. I'll show you that briefly. That shows you grid induction. So keep in mind when CMEs show up, the Aurora appear almost instantaneously. There's really no warning to it. You have to catch it, and this can help you catch it as well. So that's the geoelectric field map for US and Canada 1D experimental showing millivolts, for kilo millivolts per kilometer on those long runs of power grid lines. KP index is currently at 2.33. If you're new to the channel or unfamiliar with the KP index, it is a Global geomagnetism average. 2.33 is the geomagnetically calm condition currently experienced by planet Earth's magnetosphere. 
Current conditions for solar wind are about 500 kilometers per second for the solar wind speed. Solar wind density here quite low here. No, only three protons per cubic centimeter. So again, expect a significant signal. This is a perfect situation. It's literally the calm before the geomagnetic storm. Quick reminder, that is measured outside Earth's magnetosphere a million miles away out here at Lagrange 1 by the, in this case, the ACE and Discover are both online. GOES magnetometers here are smoothing out a little bit, and you can expect these to be all over the place, as would be apparent with a geomagnetic storm impact like this one on the 7th. So the, you can expect to see big spikes in the GOES magnetometer as a bunch of solar plasma arrives and the Earth system attempts to reach static equilibrium. Next, the heliospheric current sheet. This is the polarity of the plasma in between Earth and Sun. It also depicts the magnetic fields. You can see a lot of North Pole magnetism still hanging out at the North Heliographic Pole. It's going to suddenly snap, so let me just take an opportunity here to make a major prediction. So that field is going to suddenly snap and uh, when that happens, there's going to be a huge solar uptick all at the same time. And it's going to happen soon, in the next month. So, again, if you see this green blob right here, this, this giant green blob of magnetism, that is located at the North Heliographic Pole. And that has to leave before we can even declare solar maximum. And that is a lot of magnetism hanging out up there yet. So that's going to cause significant changes when that does start to snap down toward the equator. You ain't seen nothing yet as far as coronal holes. That is a huge one still hanging out at the North Heliographic Polar Region. Here's our line of sight field plot depicting the gong magnetogram. Solar polar fields in red for south and green for north. And Earth is just about to snap to a south pole current sheet. Uh, we're about maybe... 18 to 36 hours out for that. Solar B field depicted here in blue. And that brings us to coronal holes. Now we do see some south pole oriented coronal holes rotating in here in the southeastern limb. Let's bring up the latest image and show you our 200 angstroms wavelength. There you go, there's SDO 211. That is a 24-hour video, by the way. And next, we'll move to sunspots. So uh, no new named groups here. Uh, and a small reduction in solar activity. Don't expect it to continue. Again, there's an, a major uptick here coming in the next month. And it's going to be a result of, well, the entire solar cycle is a magnetic feature, ultimately. I'll just leave it at that, since I think I've explained the solar sunspot cycles. And I don't want anybody stealing my idea and writing a paper before I do. Yeah, it's pretty serious. Anyway, that's the current situation. Let's take a look at some sunspots here via our SDO 1700 plus 1600 angstroms. Some fantastic detail there. And you can see those brightening up of these regions right here as carbon gets created right there. Yeah, carbon, if you're frightened of it. Uh, sorry? That's the 1600 angstroms portion, by the way. The 1600 angstroms, that's ionized carbon. It's ionized carbon's extreme ultraviolet emission spectra at those high temperatures great view of those setting sunspots and again the likelihood of them producing an m-class flare is going up as they get closer and closer to the limb so the flaring is not over and neither are the coronal mass ejections here is the equatorial view in sdo continuum we do have a little bit of mild growth up here in this group so actually, that is an uptick. That's a minor uptick there. So that should be a growth in sunspot number today. We should actually see the sunspot number increase today. And we may see the radio flux increase too if we see this continue to grow, assuming the rest of those groups stay stable. 
Let's move on to some additional data sets here. Energetic particles are calming down here, although we may see a new uptick in the energetic particles as there has been an M-class flare. While we were doing show prep, we saw another M-class flare. If you want to monitor solar flaring, the effects on Earth can be shown here as deabsorption regions. You'll see solar flaring represented by near equatorial radio blackouts, and the proton events are re represented by polar radio blackouts. Again, the polar radio blackouts are caused by the solar energetic particle events represented in the ghost proton flux. These equatorial radio blackouts are caused by solar X-ray flares. And that's why there's always a bit of blacking out there because, well, the sun is at a C-class background level of X-ray flux for the next about two years since we're like a year from solar maximum. So that's what's going on at the D region absorption the D layer of the ionosphere gets attenuated by radiation and radio signals go out into space instead of refracting. So this, this latest flare was a, an M2.2 occurring right at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock universal time there, El Sol saying, hi, I'm not done yet. Again, the likelihood of X-class flares, very high. Here's the past 24 hours and 94 angstroms. And that most recent flare was actually out of this group down here. I'll bet you weren't expecting that. And there it goes. Here's 131 angstroms. And of course, we've got some extreme close-ups of this new large series of sunspots in the Northeast, which is actually getting less likely to produce large flares, statistically speaking. Much less likely to produce large flares than this group in the Northwest. Likelihood of an X-class flare going up to like, I'll say, 50%. As that group sets, its magnetic fields remain intact as very complex. All right, so we're going to get to coronal mass ejections here in a moment, as I think there is yet another one headed our way. First, let's take a moment to chill out and look up, as tonight a lot of people will be looking up. Right after dusk, we expect to be out there especially if there are strong geomagnetic storm conditions coming, and fingers crossed for that. We like to use in-dash, not in-dash, the-sky.org, although that one does work too. We're currently using skyandtelescope.org. That's what's currently overhead Lehigh Valley. We've got a gibbous waning moon setting over there toward the southwest, Saturn high near the apex of its ecliptic. And of course you've got the sun chasing Mercury and Jupiter across the morning sky. Let's do a cosmic ray report and note why we're not having a grand solar minimum. You see this? This was the cosmic ray minimum of solar cycle 24. Solar cycle 25's cosmic ray flux minimum is going to be well below that as it's going to continue to drop for the next year. So one of the many features, check cosmic ray flux significantly lower than the cosmic ray flux minimum of solar cycle 24. Also, the thermosphere was colder at this point. There were less sunspots. It was a more minimal solar minimum than the solar cycle 24 to 25 transition. I shouldn't say right there. It was actually cosmic ray flux maximum occurs at solar minimum, which is why this cosmic ray flux maximum was significantly more extreme than this cosmic ray flux maximum the solar cycle 24 to 25 transition. Not as weak of a solar minimum as the solar cycle 23 to solar cycle 24 transition. So that's just a point that a lot of people seem to be missing out on. There's your DOMB showing a massive decrease in cosmic ray flux there over the past 30 days. DOMC a massive decrease during this another four bush minimum. And you can expect that to continue for another year or two. So that's OLU and DOMC and DOMB Antarctica. 
We'll also show Mexico City. There's Mexico City showing a massive decrease in cosmic ray flux over the past 30 days, another four bush minimum occurring, and you can expect this to drop even lower tonight when the geomagnetic storm hits. Athens, Greece also showing this huge decrease. Some missing data there at the beginning of the graph. It'll be back in a couple weeks. And last but not least, a Apatite and Barentsburg, massive decreases in cosmic ray flux. Yet another reason, in addition to a huge number of solar flares over solar cycle 24 at this point, more sunspots, more coronal mass ejections. It doesn't even come close to being a grand solar minimum. It's completely out of the ballpark. It's a bunch of dogma. Speaking of dogma, Diamond has been chanting grand solar minimum, grand solar minimum, grand solar minimum to the point where I've changed his nickname to Talc. Let's check out his intro from his latest video. Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News. Sacred Geography and Shinrin Yoku. Sacred Geography and Shinrin Yoku. Okay. Looks at map Bringing you and a praise. Solar minimum update Wednesday, May 10th, around bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Now check out what he actually says about the sun here. Diamond, snap out of it, dude. You are, you have gone berserk and painted yourself into a corner with this grand solar minimum. By the way, Talc has been on our channel and uh, he even demanded that we make weekly, actually make two videos a week that are like an hour long just talking about random you know news stories and stuff and then he just unfriended me on facebook so i mean i thought we were friends i don't know what his problem is but the guy is berserk and here check this out because very little activity is coming from the sun as all is getting quiet and the disc is going to be the sun is getting quiet and the disc is going to be losing all these spots in just a few days what what? Diamond, seriously, do the math. Grand solar minimum is completely... Grand solar minimum is more out of gas than a Tesla being charged by a solar panel. You dig? Talc, seriously, do the math. That's our featured product for the day, by the way. Do the math. Featuring an active SDO image showing all kinds of awesome solar filaments in the 171 angstroms wavelength. And our favorite equation, as so many people are getting paid six figures to seven figures to really suck at math. So tell your friends and foes about this equation. Eight equals 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 capital D. Do the math and don't suck at it. You should be able to do something as simple as look at a graph or count sunspots to realize that the grand solar minimum has long since been canceled. Let's kick a dead horse. Here's your solar system forecast. That's where things will be in a week. We'll have a tiny sliver of a moon on the 18th as Mercury heads over to the opposite side of the solar system to join the gas giants. Next, coronagraphs, and again, a, another CME, I think, is headed Earth's way. So let's verify this. You can see relativistic particles striking the aperture there as a bunch of flaring happens. And I think another CME happened this morning that is earthly directed. Let's check and see. So those are yesterday's 93 frames. And here are some more frames from today. That's 26 additional frames there. And all right, I stand corrected. I don't I don't see that CME now. Let's see what we see here from yesterday. I could have sworn there was another Earth-directed looking CME. That stands for coronal mass ejection, by the way, if you're new to the channel. And pardon the length of this video. There's just so much space weather stuff to talk about that it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot. It's, uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. We're also going to show stereo A. That's depicted, well, first of all, it's only a few degrees behind the Earth, orbitally speaking now, instead of at Lagrange in 0.5. By the way, follow us on Twitter to retweet our tweet about how we need more stereotype spacecraft to help us better forecast Earth-directed CMEs. 
Okay, so I think we're good. I don't think there are any additional Earth-directed CMEs since yesterday. I I don't know if I hallucinated or <laughs> or what happened. Remember, folks, there's a difference between hallucination and delusion, right? What's the difference between hallucination and delusion? Anybody? Let us know in the comments. Pause the video and let us know in the comments. The difference between hallucination and delusion is your knowledge. In other words, if you see a hallucination and you realize that it's all in your mind, that's a hallucination. If you believe the hallucination, it's a delusion. Fun fact there. Anyway, there's the past 24 hours featuring SDO-193 and the Soho Lasco C2 and C3. And you can see some relativistic particles striking the aperture and a fantastic uh, bubble-like CME with a core. See that core coming out right there? This will be an even better view of that. In fact, let's actually pause that there. So there's a great example of a CME with very different features. I mean, you can see right here, if, if it struck Earth like this, you'd have a strong storm, and then you'd have nothing, and then you'd have a decent storm on the back end, maybe even a stronger one. Whereas if it just was just on the edge, you might just have a weak storm there for, for a short period of time. Or if the core hits you directly, you'd have a fairly strong storm, nothing, a really, really strong storm with multiple pulses, and then a little lull, and then a weak storm going out. These things have shape to them. And we see that in the real-time solar wind telemetry on the regs. Last but not least, here's just 193 by itself. And it's time to look at filaments. Again, filaments are going to remain a story. If you want to name them after living people, follow us on Twitter, hashtag name that filament. We don't name them on the YouTube comments, although you can name them there, although we're just not going to do it. Hashtag name that, name that filament on Twitter. This one here could use a name. Uh, I've got some ideas, but it's up to you, the viewer, to join us over there. Massive number of filaments. Likelihood of earthly directed coronal mass ejections remains super high. Likelihood of X-class flares over 50% for the northwestern limb. Again, follow us on Twitter. You'll see all kinds of posts and exclusive content. If you're interested in Hemp Lucid products, make sure you enter the promo code SMASHOMASH to save some dough on checkout. Save some cheddar on your checkout with the promo code SMASHOMASH for your Hemp Lucid purchases. Use our link to shop or, again, just enter the promo code SMASHOMASH on your checkout. Save some dough that way on your CBD gummies or your tinctures or your body balms or perhaps your immune stacks, whatever you're into. There's even sleep aids on the Hemp Lucid shop. If you want to follow a bunch of lifestyle and fitness posts, you can follow us over on Instagram. See my tan lines and see the full explanation of why I was complaining about my tan lines. Pro cyclists, none of us think that we look cool on the bike. Fun fact. If you think you look cool on your bike, you you are you might be delusional. So here's the past couple of hours from Go 16 SUVI here, and it's been a little bit on the calm side here. Don't expect that to continue, as there's plenty of stuff <laughs> to continue happening in this solar cycle. In fact, we are currently not just underpaid, but also overworked. Bonus features starting out with satellite charging hazards, and there ain't none. It's Calm conditions for satellites at the moment. That's our satellites community dashboard update. Electron flux here coming off the floor. And you can expect to see this dip back down once again when the CME impact arrives. So there's our GOES electron flux for the past three days. Just in a nominal operating range here. Uh, NOAA expecting an increase. I'm expecting a decrease. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with that. There's the one-year graph to put it in context. And here is the F layer of the ionosphere. Feel free to pause the video on this frame if you're not familiar with the penetration of electromagnetic radiation into atmospheric layers, solar, uh, not solar, um, atmospheric 
temperatures and chemical concentrations. Here is the F layer, the bridge between Earth and space. It's a slice of the atmosphere at 300 kilometers of altitude. This depicts vibrational frequency. It shows us when the ionosphere is perturbed by space weather. At the moment, it's a little perturbed. You can expect it to get extremely perturbed in the next in the coming week actually. Here's the anomaly gram. That'll help you to understand the anomalies there, obviously. That's the anomaly in megahertz from a 30-day median. I'm actually seeing quite a few high-frequency anomalies here. And you can expect to see this turn very red in tomorrow's daily space weather video. Again, major coronal mass ejection impacts are coming tonight. It could be your chance to see and preferably photograph and video the aurora. And by the way, if you've got imagery to share, share it with us on Instagram or Twitter. Here's the latest image. That's 12 o'clock Universal Time Ionogram. And there is 1215 Universal Time Anomalygram. Total electron content depicts free electrons to about 12,500 miles of altitude, the location of your GPS satellite. Here are the most likely places for GPS errors, and you can expect to see this get all jiggy. Some huge nighttime errors happening there around the equatorial portion of the planet. We can expect to see the electron contents a bit out of place in the coming days as a result of the geomagnetic storm conditions that are likely tonight. Here is the total electron content for North America. That is the anomaly from the 10-day average. And we will close out our space weather portion of this video with the latest high-res imagery. We show the refresh as it happens, as this is extremely timely data. There's the full disk rock back, and it's time. Time for the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, to do meteorology and chew bubblegum. And we're all out of bubblegum. So if you're frightened of sea surface temperatures, you've come to the right place. Oh my God, sea surface temperature anomalies. Look at how cold it is over here, folks. Oh my God, that means we're going to die. And look how hot it is over here, folks. Oh my God, that means we're going to die. Everything means we're going to die. So I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's been nice knowing you. Those are the sea surface temperature anomalies and the winds for the Southern Ocean, by the way. The animation, those, those white sprites flow, flowing around, those are the surface winds. Those depict speed of the surface wind and direction. The shaded portion depicts sea surface temperature anomalies. We hope you're not frightened of those. Here's what's going on in the Indian Ocean. There are your Indian Ocean sea surface temperature anomalies. Here's the world's largest surface heat sink, the Pacific Ocean. It barely even fits on the map. I mean, it's got, every, it's got the best of all worlds, folks. You've got hot water up here that people can be frightened of. You've got cold water down here that people can be frightened of. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just perfect. Here's the Atlantic Ocean. And here you've got water flowing around Greenland, which means, oh my God, the AMOC is going to shut down. Uh, although, if you look at currents, I suspect, whoops, Looks like warm water is still making it to Iceland and Ireland. Anyway, that's your sea surface temperature anomaly for the North Atlantic. A bunch of cold water mixed in here, hanging out at the surface, and a bunch of hot water as well. And there is the Arctic Ocean. I'm not sure exactly how that can be, but all right. Um, currents? I can see a bunch of that is frozen. I, I don't understand it. Anyway, whatever. There is the sea surface temperature anomaly. We've shown it. I'm over it. 
Here comes regular meteorology stuff. How about the surface winds of the east? Strong cyclone showing up on our GDAX reports, by the way, which go out to our gold and silver smash team members daily. Here are the jet streams for the eastern world, jet streams for the central world. We wish the riders in the Giro d'Italia better luck today, as yesterday was a crappy day featuring multiple crashes. The world champion, uh, Remco Evenpole was actually crashed by a dog, and Mark Cavendish idiotically crashed up a bunch of people and slid across the line in fifth place while crashing. Those are the surface winds of the central world, and here are the surface winds of the west. Here are the jet streams of the west, and let's blast through the rest of our meteorology segment. Before we get hit by a geomagnetic storm and have to be outside filming the aurora. Remember, folks, make sure you film the aurora. This is clouds and fog over the Americas, by the way. Make sure you film the aurora or at least take photographs as the aurora borealis and australis are predominantly made of ultraviolet light, which means you can't see most of it, but your camera can. If you have any indication that you're seeing the aurora, take some photos. Use your highest, your highest ISO number to get as much of that light as you possibly can. And let's take a look at our weather.gov map. So there are your weather warnings. Those are excessive heat advisories for the Pacific Northwest and some flash flood warnings for parts of Texas and Arkansas. Also some extreme flood watches there in large parts of Louisiana. If your location's lit, click your location on weather.gov. Let's start out our forecast with a temperature anomaly forecast. There's your temperature anomaly forecast for the next 72 hours. This is in degrees Celsius, by the way. Most of the country here to see slightly higher than normal temperatures. Some parts to see extremely higher than normal temperatures in the next three days. Here is our total accumulated precipitation forecast as we're calling for, look at that, that is over a foot of rain forecasted for parts of Texas. Check it out. That is like, that's like 16 inches of rain. 16 inches of rain forecasted for parts of Texas. That's your total accumulated precipitation forecast based on the GFS model for the next 72 hours. Here's your pressure and precipitation forecast. Wow. Southern Texas is getting kaplastered. Look at that extended storm strike in the same location expecting 15 plus inches of rain have your kayaks and your helmets all ready for that that is yowzers next we've got your lightning mapper this is where the lightning strikes have been and that looks like crap. I don't know why the feed looks so goofy, but let's see where lightning strikes are. Since we do have a number of active cells here over the United States. Anyway, that's where your active strikes are. Hey, Shreveport. Hey, Carthage. There's thunder rolling in. Dag. That is an extreme thunderstorm. Extreme number of lightning strikes happening there could be accompanied by damaging wind, hail, and possible tornadoes. Yeah, the frequency of lightning strikes. That's a real piece of data. A real piece of data. And this is a real channel, unlike channels who are paid six to seven figures to propagandize the Internet with utter nonsense. Speaking of propagandizing the Internet... Did you know that people in Europe don't consider the word propaganda to be a curse word like we do in the U.S.? I'll tell you what's a curse word, this channel going out of business. So <laughs> we need your support to continue these videos. We'd like to continue making them. However, we are hemorrhaging cash. So help us out by becoming a member of the Smash Team at smashomash.com slash smash team. Launched in October of 2021, not exactly the best time to launch an internet subscription service-based business. However... 
we are still here and we are still making the most detailed space weather and comprehensive solar imagery videos you'll find in the known universe. Pardon the dissolution of my face. It'll be back tomorrow, we think. Smashomash.com slash smash team. Thanks to our gold and silver smash team members especially. There's also a bronze level where we send email alerts. We've got new items on the smash team site, by the way, and on the Amazon shop. So check it out. The newest portion is our spacewear section. If you like my chrome hat, my radiation reflecting hat, you can get your own right there on the Amazon shop. Amazon.com slash smash Amazon. <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't do it. Amazon.com slash shop slash smash o mash links on the home page of that you can also find some nutritional supplement choices kitchen gadgets office furniture solutions complete with bunker tubs get your spices in bulk like the organic cocoa powder i had early this morning in my coffee and the coffee is there as well we don't endorse any products that we don't use at least not yet smashomash.com will provide you with all the links in 2019 a crack youtube unit was sent to social media prison for a crime we didn't commit we promptly escaped a maximum security social media stockade to the internet underground where we survive as producers of fortune if you have a problem if no one else can help and if you can find the videos maybe you can hire the smash team no you can certainly hire the smash team because right there is a link just click right there and sign up at the gold annual paid up subscription level it's the best value we'll send you complimentary merch if you like, we'll close out the meteorology segment with some satellite imagery of the Northern Hemisphere. Sorry, everybody from Munda. And when I say from Munda, I mean from under the equator. Most humans on the planet are on this side. <laughs> so sorry about your clockwise flowing water as it goes down the drain. As civilization doesn't go down the drain as much as many channels on YouTube wish it would. I'm not sure if I blame them. There are certainly some aspects of civilizational incompetence that are just completely unacceptable. Anyway, here's our US Doppler radar map. There is the full 50 state view. We're gonna focus on the lower 48 view. Let me just queue up the rest of our imagery here to provide you with a seamless experience. In the meantime, feel free to click the like button or leave us a nice comment or even a derogatory comment as we like to do something to make everybody angry on the internet. So check out the red bubble shop. That's got to have something to offend you. And if we haven't offended you, we are terribly sorry. We will work on that later. Anyway, here's the rest of the data. There is clouds and fog over the US, half of which is dark, so we use 3.9 micrometer radiation. And here is 6.19 micrometer radiation, which shows you the water vapor. So what's happening down here in Texas is massive pressure gradients. You've got this high pressure zone and you've got this impulse coming from the west and it's sandwiching this moisture even this moisture is colliding with air moving up from the Gulf. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. And those pressure gradients are where you're going to see some damage. Anyway, here's your recap. We'll close out this video with US Doppler radar. Clouds and fog. And there is the water vapor map. And by the way, if you think this is a chemtrail, take physics. Just take a physics class. And thanks for tuning in, by the way. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash o -Mash, signing off. May that solar wind be at your back and that aurora be videoed by your camera tonight.